You've probably all heard of icebergs by now. Heck, if you're watching this video, you've probably watched many iceberg videos before. But if you somehow don't know what an iceberg is, I'll just quickly explain it for you. Icebergs are images filled with information about a certain topic. The further you go down the iceberg, the more obscure or dark the entries become. These kinds of images are good ways to share information quickly. Granted, you know what the entry names mean. That's why today I'm covering the Hylix and Hylix 2 Iceberg. Hylix is an RPG Maker game made in the RPG Maker VX Ace that I absolutely love. And I haven't been able to play the second one yet due to hardware issues. A little thing I'll be adding for this video is this little Wayne face in the bottom corner as a health meter. This is just to show how believable I think each theory is. The more, um, dead he looks, the less believable it is. Incoming transmission. I actually managed to find two other Hylix icebergs while making this video. So I'll be going over those in other videos as to not extend the time it's taking me to create this video. So stay tuned for those videos. But without further ado, let's get the show on the road. The tip. Wayne is Gibby's brother. This is heavily implied since they both have lunar themed names. Wayne is a reference to the waning moon and Gibby is a reference to a gibbous moon. This also matches their head shapes, more so in Hylix 1, which also means their heads would fit together when looking at the moon diagrams. They definitely have some kind of relation. Hylix isn't about Gnosticism. Gnosticism is a branch of Christianity that has some differences to the main Christian beliefs, such as increased belief in one's own spirituality. These beliefs aren't too relevant to the Hylix games, but the word Hylix in Gnosticism refers to a lower order of the three types of human. But none of this matters since this entry implies the game has no relation to Gnostic beliefs, and analysing the game proves this. Wayne is a hive mind. This seems somewhat true. Wayne is definitely a species as seen in Hylix 2, and they may have some shared knowledge in between multiple Waynes. Some of the Waynes at the Wayne house do seem freakishly in sync, so I'm inclined to believe they have some kind of shared mind. The water's surface. Pongorma's vault. This is most likely referring to the room you find Pongorma in in Hylix 1. You're required to complete a kind of combination code to unlock his room. This is the only way into this room, and there doesn't look to be any way to unlock it from the inside, which implies Pongorma was locked inside the vault, maybe waiting to help the hero on his adventure. Pongorma also refers to this room as a vault in his dialogue. Also, I'll never be able to talk about this ever again, so while I was looking on the Hylix wiki, I found this amazing word, quadripronged. It refers to Pongorma's helmet, how it's got four prongs. The technical term for something that has four prongs is quadripronged. I just wanted to bring that up because there will never be another situation where I get to bring up the word quadripronged. Unused slash cut content. This is where I get to officially plug my Hylix unused content videos. Yeah, I made a couple of videos on Hylix unused content that should be linked in the description and in a card. There are a few noteworthy unused items such as hand animations for spells, an unused title screen, and tons of unused maps. If you want more information on this, you should totally check out the videos and the cutting room floor page for Hylix. However, be warned, there's a bit of misinformation in my videos, but I did correct it in the comments of those. And I won't go over all the unused content in this video because there is quite a lot to go over, so I implore you to go and watch my videos on the Hylix cut content. The Afterlife in both Hylix games, when you die, you get transported to the afterlife instead of getting a game over. Apart from being an amazing gameplay mechanic, the afterlife has some lore significance too. It could imply that Wayne and the party reincarnate after death, since, well, Wayne looks pretty dead when he dies. The afterlife also allows you to restore your health and up your stats, adding to the reincarnation or coming back to life stronger idea. Other than that, the afterlife exists. The Cone Cultist Cult Cone cultists are enemies from the beginning of Hylix 1. Their name implies that they are part of a cult, although there's not much information on what this cult is about. They only have two attacks, headbutt and sulk, so there's not much to analyse there. Honestly, there isn't too much information on this topic that I could find. Significance of Meat Meat is an item you receive from defeating enemies that can be used to increase your flesh points, which is your HP in Hylix. The implication of meat is that Wayne assimilates the enemy's flesh to upgrade his own strength. The death animation may also show the creation of meat, with Wayne's flesh melting off his face. This is backed up by the dead Wayne lava in Hylix 2 that Wayne can collect meat from. The Deeper Waters 
Airship underscore combatant. Airship underscore combatant is an unused battle object that occurred in pre-release versions of Hilux 2 when entering some battles. The airship was controllable while in battle, for example, when the player moved the cursor, the airship would move in the corresponding direction. This object existing could hint at there once being battles during airship segments, but for whatever reason they were removed. No one really knows what purpose this object would have served. It uses the regular airship sprites, only tinted yellow, so it could have been some kind of ally in battle? Or perhaps it was intended to replace your cursor when in airship battles? In the image you can see the game is using the airship camera in the battle segment, which shows the object wasn't fully programmed in before it was scrapped. Thanks to many people in the Hilux Discord, Hylacord for helping me out with this one. There wasn't any information online for this one, so Hylacord was a great help. Dedesmull knows. This one most likely means nothing. There are a lot of things that Dedesmullen could know, and this entry is very vague. Like, what does he know? I, I mean, he knows about paper cups. He definitely knows about paper cups. I, that's definitely what that's what this entry is is uh, is referring to. Hundred percent. The glandular significance. Glandular is one of the words that can get chosen by Hilux RNG text generator. By the way, if you're interested in how the random text is generated in Hilux One. I've linked a document in the description that will help. As for the significance of the word glandular, I'm not sure. There probably isn't one. Dracula pulling the strings. This entry alludes to the character from Hylix 1, Dracula. According to the iceberg, Dracula was supposedly pulling the strings the whole time. So all the travesty in Hylix 1, for example, the land's mass hysteria, which manifests in the randomly generated text in the game, was all Dracula's doing. However, this can be easily debunked by the entirety of Hylix 2. Dracula doesn't appear anywhere in the second game, and the same randomly generated text can still be observed here. Gibby was most likely the one pulling the strings all along. Alternatively, you could see Hylix 1's act transmissions as Dracula pulling the strings, as you have to press switches and levers in order to progress the game in those scenes. But what could he be pulling the strings of? Maybe he's helping Wayne's crew on their adventure? Items causing vivid hallucinations. I think this is referring to the item usage animations. These could be seen as hallucinations that the characters are having. Man, what was in that dynamite? This theory makes sense in a surreal world such as the one of Hylix. Hylix is about Gnosticism. This theory thinks Hylix is actually about Gnosticism, but due to there not being many similarities, I think this is false. Mason Lindroff said on an Instagram livestream that the name Hylix can be somewhat up to interpretation. So why why did you choose the name Hylix? Uh, what did the game have to do with um, Gnosticism, if at all? Uh, I, I I think it's more of a how can I put it? Um, I was thinking of um, the characters as uh, I I <laughs> I don't know how to answer. <laughs> it, it, the meaning for me has changed over time. It, um, I could have named it like automatons or something I was, I was thinking of like the um the like non-player characters their random speech like thoughtless beings the hylix i don't i don't know if it still means that to me um but uh, that's that's why i that's how i came to that word um you know get out get out the, th the thesaurus and um you know relating kind of to matter or material yeah, yeah, and the game is very, um, there's a lot of materials, uh, very tactile, so the game I'm seeing is someone type uh, soullessness in the comments here, and, and uh, there, were, there were some zen thoughts, you know, there was some, not, well, maybe not zen, <laughs> yeah, I was, like, post-college, so, you know, I had some, uh, some angst, maybe, going. So I suppose it's your choice as a viewer to choose which theory you believe. Hello, it's Editing Harry here. I just wanted to mention that these Instagram Live videos are a really, really good source and it's a really, really interesting thing to watch if you're interested in anything Hylix or anything Mason Lindroff related. One very, very cool person archived the live stream into two parts and put them on their YouTube channel, which is really, really cool and it's currently the only place they exist on the internet. As with all the outside sources I use in this video, everything will be linked in the description. Anyway, back on to the next thing, which is about Gibby, I think. Gibby is the Demiurg. 
In many religious and spiritual circles, the Demiurge is supposedly the creator of the universe. It's possible that Gibby created the Hilux universe since he clearly has some kind of magical powers. One thing that may interrupt this theory is the fact that Gibby dies at the end of Hilux 1, though he does return in Hilux 2 revived. I don't really believe in this theory though. I subscribe to the theory that Gibby is more of a tyrant that's taken over the world slash universe rather than being the creator of the universe. The Depths Chair underscore guy, unused content. I covered chair guy or dude in my Hilux unused content videos. Long story short, chair guy is an, I think intentionally, unused enemy in Hilux 1. His sprite was used in a Hilux 1 promotional gif, which I think was its intended use. This character seems to be a favourite of Mason Lindroff, as he's used in many of Hilux's promotional media and in-game as a minor character, of course. He also has his own troop in the game, which is an RPG maker mechanic called Dude Troop, and this is the troop that appeared in the Hylix Greenlight GIF, which is a GIF that Mesa Lindroff made to celebrate Hylix getting Steam Greenlight, so I think its intended use was just for that GIF. Also, in this GIF, you can see some unused hand animations. Just a little bit of cool trivia there for you. Again, I think these hand animations are deliberately unused. Beachcomber is prophetic. Beachcomber is a previous game of Lindros that, according to this entry, is supposedly prophetic. I'm not really sure in what way it's prophetic. This game does seem to portray some kind of weird phenomena, though. This little dude, let's look at this little dude, combs the beach. And he does find some mysterious items, but nothing inherently prophetic. Unless, theory time, what if this planet in Beachcomber is actually the moon from Hylix? Some kind of strange events happen in the events of Beachcomber. Could this be Gibby's takeover of the moon? This is entirely speculation and most likely not correct, but it's fun to think about, isn't it? Sentient AI hidden in the code. This is most likely a reference to the Super Mario 64 every copy is personalized meme. Sadly, obviously it's untrue. Chuck Salamon is a pen name. Chuck Salamone is the co-composer of some of the tracks in Hylix 2, and I did some research for this one, and by that I mean I did one Google search, and I believe Chuck Salamone's full name is Charles, Chuck for short, so Chuck isn't exactly a pen name, but it's just a shortened version of, of his regular name that he uses for his music. I have no idea if he enjoys being called Charles, so please don't go around saying his full name, you know, just in case. The gibberish is not gibberish. This is referring to the randomly generated text that appears in both Hylix games. Some of this text does actually tell the story, for example the opening cutscene shifts around adjectives which personalises each playthrough. I think this is a nice addition to the game that rewards replay value. As for it not being gibberish, I'd say it's half true, since a lot of the text does result in gibberish, while some does personalise the story and actually have meaning. Asmosnos This is an anagram of the word Somstosa. Or more accurately, Somsnosa is an anagram of Asmosnos, because Asmosnos came first. In the same Instagram livestream as I mentioned earlier, Mason talked about how the word came from a childhood drawing he did where he misspelled his name. This is a really good question here. Um, where did the name Somsnosa and its anagrams, like Mosnaso and Asmosnos, come from? Yeah. Uh, this is a great question. Oh man, I don't know if this is gonna look. Uh, it's, it's, it's too too mind blowing. I, I have like a, a drawing from like when I was three or something where I was trying to write my name and it says Asmo Snos. So, so you know, I, I just thought that was great. When I was doing um, like jam game jam games where you have like uh, two or three days to make a game, I would you know I'd have like. Most not, it's just as something like that. And then for the subsequent games, I, I rearranged that. So like some Snosa and a few others um, are Mas from Naso. that. Yeah. Um. Hylix is post-human. There's a lot of evidence for Hylix taking place in a post-human world. There are many human-like items featured in both games. There's vegetables, juice boxes, burritos, dynamite, and many more human artifacts in both games. Dennis Malun is even an archaeologist who's searching for these artifacts. He's particularly interested in paper cups, of course. What does this mean for characters such as Sonsnosa, I wonder? She's awfully humanoid, huh? In Hylix 2, her death portrait in battle seemed to show a human-looking skull. So is it possible that Sonsnosa, or whatever species she is, is an evolved form of humans? It's fun to think about. Ludum Dare Games Mason Lindroff has made quite a few games for the Ludum Dare Game Jams. For anyone that doesn't know, a game jam is an event where contestants have to make a game in a short amount of time. Lindroff's Ludum Dare entries include... Asmosnos 
A wacky platformer where you play as this little yellow guy. Totally beta Wayne. I'm just kidding. There's not much of this one, but it's a fun little romp nonetheless. And of course, it has Maitland and Dross iconic, iconic imagery within the game. Fishing Club. This is an RPG Maker game that was sadly lost to the bowels of the internet. All I have to show are these very low quality screenshots, and a quote from Mason Lindros' Dead Ludum Dare page. A short, barely coherent game I made to learn RPG Maker, and work on a drawing style for that engine. The artwork is all new though, and pretty bad. Which is true. There's actually a few leftovers from Fishing Club in the files for Hylix, which I'll show on screen now. Some Snow Sir, yet another RPG Maker game that's lost to the internet. Someone did actually manage to get hold of the game and even did a full playthrough on their YouTube channel. So all the footage I'll be showing is from there. As stated by this Reddit thread, Lindroff supposedly dislikes Fishing Club and Som Snosa, which is why the Som Snosa uploader doesn't want to hand out copies. After the Ludum Dare 26 jam had finished, he added a mini post-mortem to the game's page, which reads, Edit. Mini post-mortem. Admittedly, it's more of a graphics demo than a game. I needed to try and make an epic JRPG as a reaction against the theme. I plan to either flesh this out or fold its content into a new project. Look forward to it, little O-Face. And I believe this new project eventually turned into Hylix, because the game has many similarities to Hylix 1, such as the art style, the battle style, the main character in Som Snosa's house, has the exact same layout as Som Snosa's house in Hylix, it may even be the same map, and of course the fact that the game's name went on to become the name of Som Snosa, the party member in Hylix. It's pretty safe to say that Som Snosa is a precursor to Hylix 1, as many of its elements eventually made it into that game, albeit more fleshed out. There's even some leftovers from Snosa in Hylix 1's files, and here they are on screen. Almost Fluid Plantain Another one that's actually playable! Almost Fluid is a tiny band simulation program. <laughs> the scene depicted in this game is very similar to the ending sequence of both Hylix games, where you can control the members of the band using different keys on your keyboard. Hylix absolutely does seem like the culmination of all of Lindros' early work. Weird Egg and Crushing Finger Weird Egg starts out as an uninhabited island where a weird egg and a crushing finger that you can control. This seems to be the first appearance of the hand sprites that would later appear in Hylix and some of other Lindros early games. This game is really interesting to play, it's kind of like a god game where as the crushing finger you get to decide the fates of the creatures that live on this island. Your goal, naturally, is to collect as many souls as you can to make the humanoid creatures dance. It's fun to see all the little interactions in this game, I'd recommend giving this one a try. Beachcomber Ah yes, the supposedly prophetic game. This one's trippy, it has three different endings and the ways in which you get them are strange to say the least. You play as this little cute fella and well, you do what the title says, you comb the beach. Using your metal detector you uncover things that aren't exactly metal, but who says things in these games have to make sense? This one's surprisingly deep for what it is, I'd recommend giving this one a go if you like surrealism. And judging by the fact that you clicked on a Hylix video, I'd say you're into that kind of thing. Lullaby. Oh yeah, this one, I love this one. If this doesn't scream unique, I don't know what will. Here's the same style of photographed real life hands again, which you control using the WAS keys for one hand and the arrow keys for the other. The gameplay consists of flicking through TV channels and manipulating the creatures within. It's a very, very interesting concept and it's one that I haven't seen anywhere before. Which is something that I really love about Mason Lindros games is that he just comes up with these concepts and he moulds them in his unique style and it's just so cool to see and it's very inspiring for me too. Moss Nasso this is a Zelda-like dungeon crawler where your goal is to defeat all the enemies in your path. As always, this game features Lindroth's signature surrealist style. This time it's more of an MC Escher-esque style with these rooms bending into each other and stuff. This one's kind of short but fun. Remember, Game Jam games are normally made in a couple of days, so they aren't meant to be full games or fully fleshed out experiences. You're more going into a Game Jam game expecting some fun gameplay rather than a fully fleshed out story. Melter. Melter's a cool little platformer. However, this game is really laggy for me, probably due to hardware issues. Each object in this game is its own simulated physics object, so that's probably why it's lagging for me. Other than that, the video on Mason Lindroth's channel looks fun. It's a game I'd love to try if it wasn't for hardware issues. In this game, you platform through different levels while melting the different objects within them. Hence the name Melter. The melting animations are actually somewhat reminiscent of Wayne's face melting in Hylix 1. Perhaps this was another little bit of animation knowledge that was carried forward when creating Hylix 1. 
Fishbowl. I absolutely love Fishbowl. You play as this little yellow fella who is tasked with collecting these three fishbowls from different areas around the map. Sadly, this is another laggy one for me, so I'm using Mason Lindros footage. I just like this game, I, I think it's neat. In my personal opinion, I think Lindros style really shines in this game in particular. I think it's the mix of the colours that really makes the whole game pop. The combat and platforming are unique for a platformer and were enjoyable from what I could play. Plus the main character is just adorable. Vadar. Vadar! Vadar! It's just so cool, it's... It's swag. Vadar is a trivial animation slash drawing program. It allows you to make collages of images in the index color and dithered style I've been praising in this entire video. For me it's just fun to play around with but I'm sure a proper artist would be able to make some cool things using this. Just a note, if you want to play these games yourself, I'll leave a link to Mason Lindros Ludum Dare page in the description. You'll find all the downloads there. They'll be in Shockwave Flash format, so you'll have to download the Flash Player application in order to play them. And I'll leave a link to where you can download that in the description too. And for Vadar in particular, there wasn't a download on the Ludum Dare page. So I actually had to like, dig through the internet to get a download for this one. And I eventually resorted to using Flashpoint, and I'll be linking that in the description under a... Google Drive link because it's not online anywhere. Alternatively, you can just search the term Mason Lindroff into Flashpoint and you'll you'll find Vedar. Of course, some Snowstand and Fishing Club will be missing. Whew! And that brings us to the end of the Ludum Dare games. The Deeper Depth. Pungorma is Wayne from another temporal plane. This one is entirely possible, and there's a small amount of evidence for it. The vault that Pongorma is locked in in Hynix 1 could be seen as some kind of stasis chamber, or some kind of thing to keep him alive while he's travelling between temporal planes. Pongorma is also a warrior, and, um, Wayne fights? Um, not exactly sure how Wayne's head is supposed to fit inside that helmet. The afterlife fish are key. This refers to the fish that are in the afterlife in Hylix 1. Supposedly, the fish are key to... something. The entry doesn't say what they're key to, so I'm unsure what this could be. Perhaps they're key to Wayne and the gang's survival, because they do provide hints on things you can do in the game. For example, there's the fish that tells you that you need to die three times in order to get the axe, and the other fish tell you basic tutorial stuff on how to use the afterlife. But I'm not really sure how this makes them key to the game. Significance of Fleem. Fleem is a cut character from Hylix 2 who looked like this. They originally had the armor that Didusmulum wears in the final game, and the head model was reused for some snowstorm in the final game. The name Fleem was then reused for an enemy. Supposedly, the unused party member character drives a car in the bowels of the earth in Hylix 2, stripped of the horns though. Fleem has a story in the development of the second game, but I don't think there's anything that directly makes him significant. The reason that Fleem was cut can be traced back to the Instagram livestream again. Someone asked about um, the names in the super early Hylix 2 release stuff, like what will become of Decris, what will become of Fleem. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I was planning to do a whole new, a whole new party of uh, characters. Um, but then I started thinking of like games that I've played where they did the sequel and changed up all the characters and uh, no, that was never a good thing, you know? <laughs> so I, I, um, I changed it all back. Also, I think I was, this story was kind of progressing in a similar, uh, like a similar um, format. So it, 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 not that, not to say that it's like a rehash. What am I, what am I saying? <laughs> um, um, they just started to feel like substitutes. So I felt like, why not just right. go back to the old character, the old and beloved characters. Uh, as for what will happen with the characters um, or who they are, uh, Decrez was going to be like basically a, a female version of Wayne, uh, Femme Wayne. Um, I'll find some use for Fleem and Instar. Hylix is set in the past. There isn't really much to go on for a timeline for Hylix, though it being set in an alternate past version of Earth could be possible, as in the human race ended in a year before the 2000s. There's a bit of evidence for this, such as the televisions in the games look like CRT TVs rather than modern flat screen displays. The computers in Hylix also look more like 80s to 90s PCs. There's also a few other things in the promotional material, like this phone here. This is an interesting theory that I think somewhat holds up. Dedesmuln is human. 
At first, this theory seems baseless, and while I don't believe it, I still think it's interesting to think about. Dedesmon being human could explain their fascination with human artifacts, like they want to remember the times when humans still roam the planet, which connects back to the theory about Hylix taking place in a post-human world. A few flaws with this theory are that Dedesmon is actually unisex, as well as it being confirmed that he has horns and no humanoid features between the horns. Wayne Duck an adorable image of a duck with Wayne's head. It appears in a late game area in Hylix 2, so I won't spoil exactly where it appears. And it's just so cute, look at it. And of course there's this amazing video, in which Mason Lindroff showed off a model of a Wayne duck in the Instagram livestream, and it became a kind of meme in the Hylix community thereafter. The Juice Pack Code. This seems to point towards code for the juice pack in a Hylix game, but I'm not entirely sure what it's referring to, because, I mean, obviously the juice packs are coded in to the Hylix games, but there isn't in anything entirely special about the juice pack code itself. The bottom of the iceberg. Hylix cart in the code. Man, I wish there was a Hylix cart, but sadly it doesn't exist. Imagine it though. Wayne racing around in some kind of sports car and then Pongorma would have like a truck or something. Mason, this better be your next game or there will be consequences. Poolmen are neurons. Gibby and his area are often referred to as a fancy meat computer as well as his track in the game, aka a brain. And the pink goop in his area in Hylix 2 does also resemble the colour of a brain, which is also the area that the poolmen appear in, and they multiply just like cells do. All the hints point towards them being neurons, or at least a reference to neurons. Chairman, secret boss battle and significance. Chairman, also known as Dude, is a cut character in Hylix 1. He appeared in multiple GIFs Mason Lindroff posted on Tumblr during the time leading up to the release of Hylix. In one of these GIFs, he appears in-game alongside a few other enemies. Because he appeared in these GIFs, he had to be coded into the game, so he has an unused fight. He has one attack, the basic enemy attack, and he's fairly weak. However, he has a whopping 20,000 HP. You don't gain anything from defeating him. Again, I don't think there's any significance to this, but it's still an interesting fact nonetheless. The word significance must be a thing the creator of this iceberg used to make things sound more mysterious. Unused Galliform Death Event This was an event in Hylix 2 that was discovered by playtesters wherein a cataclysmic error would occur when defeating a group of the enemy Galliforms at the excavation site. The error occurred because of an unused event that was supposed to trigger when these enemies were defeated. However, in its unfinished state, it crashed the game. It was later patched after the playtesters told Mason Lindroth. This is another one that Hylicod helped me with. Big, big thanks to them. The Catamites Connection the Catamites is the creator of another RPG maker game, Space Funeral. This and Hylix have similar graphical styles with bright colours and strange avant-garde elements. Mason Lindroff was actually playing through Space Funeral while he was working on the first Hylix game, and he said in the Instagram live that a lot of Hylix's elements were directly and subconsciously inspired by that game. Space Funeral is a cool yet unsettling game. I'd recommend it if you like creepy or unsettling imagery, but if you're easily spooked, this one might not be for you. The Sea Floor Cone Cultist Law There isn't anything explicitly stating any Cone Cultist Law within Hylix, and the Cone Cultists don't appear anywhere in Hylix 2, so there isn't much to go on here. Their name being Cone Cultists implies that they have a cult, but there isn't m much more than that to explain, and I already covered that in an earlier entry. If you happen to know anything about this law, comment in the comments or contact me on uh, any social media. But I honestly don't think there is any law to these cone cultists. This might be another bogus entry. Astral dreams after playing. This is stating that supposedly people had strange dreams after playing Hylix. I searched far and wide for anyone who experienced this but came back empty handed. Both Hylix games are often referred to as fever dreams, so I guess this entry does make sense. I wouldn't be surprised if someone had a strange dream after playing Hylix. Lunar Poetry. DO NOT RESEARCH! Ha! Huh, well I researched it, and the only thing I could find when I did it is this black metal album with the title Lunar Poetry. I doubt this is what the entry is referring to, if it's even referring to anything. Every copy of Hylix is sentient. This one's completely true, yeah, okay, moving on. I'm kidding, of course, this is another reference to the Super Mario 64 iceberg and rumours, and it's a good one too. Without the Super Mario 64 iceberg, I wouldn't be here talking to you about this game right now. Ambulant Skulls are human. Ambulant Skulls are these enemies in Hylix 1, whose sprites also appear in Weird Egg and Crushing Finger. The skulls inside those tentacles do look strangely human, huh? 
In accordance with other theories, Hylix does take place in a post-human world. Could these skulls be the remaining remnants of humans? If so, what the heck happened to them? Could this be Gibby's doing? The Wayne Egregore. Dangerous research with caution. I made sure to use caution when typing this one into Google, don't worry. The word egregore is defined as an occult ritual in which one higher being arises from a group of people performing the ritual. I'm guessing this one says research with caution because there isn't much to research. These rituals were performed in Gnosticism, so that's probably where the connection lies here. But there isn't much in either of the games that suggests Wayne partakes in these egregores. And, well, the last few of these are definitely not real. The creator of this one most likely didn't know what to put on these lower levels. Overall, I'd say this iceberg is a good introduction to the Hylix lore and everything surrounding Mason Lindroth. However, there are obviously quite a few entries that were completely false, which doesn't help when you're trying to document information on the game. But as I said at the start of the video, there's a couple of other Hylix icebergs that I found while making this video, so you should subscribe if you don't want to miss those videos when they come out. Well. Until next time. Hmm, I guess with the random text, it technically does make every playthrough of Hylix personalised.